Good day and welcome to our first Sunday in December and our first Sunday of Advent. A time of expectation as we go forward to the celebration of the great good news of faith, the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And as we gather this day, I invite you now to share with me our call to worship. Let us share it together. For unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given, and the government shall rest upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And as we gather this day, in our time of expectation of the coming of the great good news in Jesus in this Christmas season, I invite you now to share the first word Jesus spoke at the resurrection when he rose from the grave and met Mary. That word is a word of welcome, a word of well-being, a word of peace. Shalom. May that shalom be with each of us. Shalom. Shalom in Christ. And as we lift up that shalom, that welcome, that well-being, that faring well, that peace, we light this candle, the Christ candle, to remind us that the
the peace of Christ, the love of Christ, the well-being of Christ. It's a light that shines for us in the darkness, and the darkness can never overcome it. Amen. And as we do gather this day, I invite you to share with me our prayer of preparation for our time together. Let us pray. As we look to the sky, a star shines brighter than any other, and we know, we know that this star shines a light and a path to our Savior. What a mighty God we serve. This light we will touch all mankind and be a beacon of hope, joy, and love. Father, we ask that you allow that love to encompass our being all of our days. We ask that this in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, this is our desire and this is our prayer. Amen. Our scripture this day is from the Gospel according to Mark, chapter 1, verse 1, and verses 9 and 10. It says this, In the beginning, the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice from heaven 
came and said, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. May God add blessings to the reading of this word and bring blessings to those who hear this word and transform the written and spoken word into the living word. Amen. Last week, last Sunday, I began the narrative of the coming of Christ. I used John's Gospel first as it pointed in John's writing that the idea of the Christ, the Messiah of Jesus, is at the very creation when the God when God brought the world into being. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And that Word came to fruition in time with the birth of Jesus in Bethlehem. This is another beginning story. Not a birth story, but it's a beginning story of a call to ministry, a call to going forward, a call of faith. It is, in a sense, a Christmas story. As Mark begins his testimony, the beginning of the good news, the first advent of the good news. And this advent was not from the creation or from his birth, but by his ordination of his call to ministry, Jesus' call to ministry, and how he began it. He began it by being baptized in the Jordan River by his cousin John the Baptist. Often in the Christian faith, baptism is seen as a removal or a washing away of sin or purification. But Jesus, we believe, was without sin. So why was he baptized? It is my understanding and belief that Jesus began his ministry by his baptism. It is also my belief that when we are baptized, I understand the symbols of removal of sin, of washing, of even resurrection. But it's also a sign of preparation, of coming up from the water to life and to a calling. Within my religious tradition, that when one is baptized upon their confession of faith, which is, Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior, that when I am baptized, I come out of the water. I am ordained to the priesthood of all believers. That each of us, by our baptism and the tradition of confirmation, are called to our ministry. Because Jesus was called to his ministry, and that was his symbol of preparation, of going forward, of renewing. And as we all know, or do know, that the first thing Jesus did was to go into the wilderness to meditate, to reflect, and there be tested by Satan, that we too are tested. But we're part of that priesthood of all believers. We are ordained to our calling as members of faith in Jesus Christ, that we are tested. But our faith, our baptism, affirms and confirms that we can pass through a time of testing to go forward. So Jesus began his ministry with his baptism. So putting the old behind him and going forward. And each of us is called by our baptism. To be, as they term, often used as born again, but reborn again to our faith, our call, our ministry, that we're there to go forward, to share the good news. There are times of tempting and uncertainty. 
much even Jesus experienced. But he passed through it. And he called others to follow and invited them. As we know in the early old, the early parts of the New Testament in the book of Acts, all from the apostles, after Jesus had got resurrected from the dead and going back to be with God the Creator and Father, that they baptized as a symbol of being entering into the priesthood of being born to that priesthood again, that we can have direct, each one of us, access to God's, to God's being, God's help, God's prayer, to the inspiration and empowerment of the Holy Spirit to strengthen us and guide us, and to know that Jesus is there for us, as it says in him, walks with us and talks with us, and tells each of us we are Christ's own. So we who have been in this moment are called in this season of Advent to go forward with renewal, faith, hope, and love. That whatever we may encounter, we can pass through. Our baptism is a sign of new birth, rebirth, strength and courage. May you in this Advent season begin your journey, actually continue your journey of faith, to celebrate that moment with the angels on high. Jesus Christ is born for each one of us. God bless you and God keep you this day. Amen. And as is our tradition of gathering on the first Sunday of each month to observe our Lord's Supper, and especially on this December month, to remember this is a, our time of expectation of Advent of the great good news, and to lift up our faith, our hope, our love in Jesus Christ in remembrance of his last supper. And as I've often said, the first supper of the Christian faith a supper of joy and thanksgiving. This Advent season is a time, again, of thanksgiving for God's presence with us, Christ's love with us, and the empowerment of the Holy Spirit with us. And we recall the story that Jesus, on a Thursday evening, observed the Passover of the Jewish people, a celebration of freedom from bondage and slavery, a journey to liberation and hope in a promised land. As they celebrated that meal that night, I believe not only with just the apostles, but with family and friends, Jesus took up the two elements of that meal. They are ancient symbols, symbols of presence, symbols of passion, symbols of love. That night, the table, he took bread, the staff of life for all humanity. And he broke that bread that night to share with those who were gathered, as we hope we will all share today, and said these words. This is my body given for you to take and eat in remembrance of me. It's a moment in which we partake and internalize Christ's presence with us. This is the symbol of that taking in. And likewise, that night he took a cup, a cup of the Hebrew faith that spoke of God's presence. He said that night to those gathered, and to us this day. This cup is the new covenant in my blood for the remission of sin. This is the new relationship, the new hope, the new help, the new agreement. And this cup, cup realizes as you partake of it <clears throat> that whatever holds you back, whatever is hurtful or painful to you, is removed. 
there is healing. So I invite you now to share with me the bread and the cup, his words, the body of Christ given for me, and the cup of new covenant shed for me. As we gather this Sunday, I invite you to lift up your prayers, prayers of faith, hope, and love for yourself and for those who need to hear a word of faith, hope, and love in their lives, for those who need healing in body, mind, and spirit, and that the star that shined in ancient times Challenge for us as we go forward to rejoice in the birth of Jesus. Let us pray. Gracious God, creating God, empowering God, you are the one who brought creation into being, who brought us into being gave us the breath of life, the presence of the Spirit. As we gather in this Advent season and begin our journey, the journey of faith, a faith that knows the good news, a faith that believes that we can pass through all moments of time, whatever the issues and situations may be, and come out from them restored, renewed, that we can find peace of body, mind, and spirit. And that peace, we pray with those who need that sense of peace in their lives, loved ones and friends and neighbors, and in the world around us, in Israel and Gaza and in Ukraine, find peace. That in our journeys of this coming weeks of hope, hope that we can be instruments vessels of your good news, that by our baptism and confirmation we can share that good news, and that we can approach you always in our times we need to go forward and love, as Jesus taught, to love our neighbors, even those neighbors with whom we may have difficulty, as we love ourselves that both are intertwined and you are that source that can give us faith, hope, and love. Christ is the one who can share that good news with us. And the Holy Spirit, your breath, can empower us as people of faith, hope, and love. Hear our prayers this day as we go forward on our journey to Christmas. This we ask in Christ's name. And I invite you now to share with me the prayer Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'm glad you've joined me this day in our first Sunday in Advent, in our time of communion, of sharing together our Lord's Supper. And I look forward to you being with me on our, on our journey this Advent season as we renew the story of the birth of Christ in our lives. And I invite you now to share with me our benediction. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Go in peace. Amen. <laughs>